So for your information, today's ceremony will be completely led by our own go-getters. Uh, and they're actually the graduates of Get 2021. So we started off with 50 over girls and just over 30 of them graduated. So this is not easy feat. It is a year-long program with a lot of changes, right? Like from being physically in school and then being at home and then going back to school. And they stayed with us throughout the whole year. So thank you so much, girls, for doing this. Um, and to the supporters of Get 2021, NI, Intel, Seaside Technologies, Motorola Solutions, Micron and LAM Research, I hope you'll be able to appreciate the positive difference that you are making on these girls as you go through today's ceremony. And also to the supporters of GET in the coming years, our team at PSD are excited to make a sustained impact with you in the future. And now I will pass the virtual stage to our girls, Maria and Ainsley. Over to you girls. Hello everybody, I am Ainsley bringing you live from Penang Science Cluster. And I Hi. am Maria bringing you live from home and we will be the MCs for today. for today. So I hope everybody is doing well. So we all know why we're here today. So the GET participants joined seven sessions throughout this year and completed a two-month project phase, gaining some precious knowledge each time and now. We, would, we have reached the very end of the tunnel. So congratulations, GET graduates. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. Before we begin, let's go through today's agenda. We'll start with a few words by our guests of honor, Dato Shida, as well as Mr. Selvam. Then we will welcome our role model for today, Miss Y Thing. We will then continue with a few videos highlighting our experiences throughout GET, including some videos and a sharing session by one of our own GET girl. We will also be launching the website. This is new and even I will be seeing it for the first time today. With that, let's begin with today's ceremony with the opening remarks by the lovely Dato Shida Ahmad, who is the Vice President and General Manager of Keysight Technologies, patron of GET program. The virtual stage is yours, Dato Shida. Well, thank you, Ainsley, and good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see all of you again. And I hope all of you and your families are healthy and safe. You know, the last time we were all together was actually during the launch of the uh, GET program, right? But that was way back in March. Now, nine months later, here we are celebrating the graduation of the first inaugural cohort uh, of, the, of the girls in GET. And more importantly, you know, I mean, it's just amazing actually to see how far this program has come and more importantly, to celebrate how much uh, our young participants have achieved in the last nine months. So to our 38 young ladies, go get this, congratulations on your GET graduation. I know this is a momentous day for you. I know you've worked very hard, gone through a lot to be here today. Um, I believe you have completed, what, 14 technical and soft skills modules. You did a final project and all this while juggling the challenges of your school and studies and doing all the GET sessions virtually. And, you know, uh, being having to collaborate with each other uh, at a distance, um, sometimes through patchy internet connection and maybe lack of instruments at some time, right? So it's, it took a lot of perseverance, discipline and self-direction on your part. And I, you know, I really believe you all of you should be very proud of what you have achieved today. I got the opportunity to look at your projects, very impressed by the caliber of your work. I can see each of you had put in a great deal of thought and effort into it, utilizing everything that you've learned, you know, the technical problem-solving skills. And you get to then showcase your creativity, your passion, your teamwork. And you know what? All these are, in fact, the foundations of an engineer's work. And you go get this really 
have excelled so well in it already. So I really hope you enjoyed your first experience and glimpse into this world of engineering and technology. Let's make sure you continue uh, along this path. Keep in touch with each other and stay active in the GET alumni. Take it to the next level, right? Build up your knowledge and gain more experience. And my wish for you as, as your patron is for you to eventually take your place um, among the engineers and leaders of tomorrow and make a difference in the world. Uh, looking at what you have achieved so far, I am 100% confident that you can do it. And I'm also very proud to see how well the GET program has positively, positively, uh, positively impacted the lives of uh, the young ladies in the short nine months. And I think this is where, uh, this is what the program is all about, right? Encouraging, nurturing young girls to take up career in engineering and technology. We need more of girls to bring in the different perspective uh, after all, half the sky is yeah. the world. Uh, half the sky is 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 a girl yeah, yeah. to help solve the world's yep. problem. I mean, okay. Hi there, somebody. You need to put your mute on. You. We need more girls, as I say, to bring more uh, a different perspectives uh, to solve the world's problem, make our lives better, safer, and more uh, convenient. Now, as your patron, I am truly honored to be part of this program. And I want to thank the Penang Science Cluster, Ping Yi and Gang, for bringing this to life and for running it so efficiently. And we could not have come this far without the efforts and dedication of the GET Committee, led by ASEAN, all the mentors, all the facilitators going above and beyond to make this program and our young participants successful. I truly believe you are the beating heart of the uh, program and inspiration for our young ladies here. So let's give yourself a round of applause. So to the participating corporations this year, NI, Intel, Keysight, Micron, LAM Research and Motorola, Thank you for all your support uh, on this effort. And you know you should be really proud of all your volunteers and uh, the difference that they are making. And not forgetting all the teachers of the students who have encouraged the girls through this program. A very big thank you to all of you for enabling them to complete the program and graduate, to, graduate today. And we are really blessed to have dedicated educators like you. Now, moving forward, I am really excited that this program, the GET program, is growing. We have new companies that's joining us next year. I think Inari, Pixart, Pixart Imaging, Robert Bosch, Contron, Vitrox, Xperia, and I know there are a few others in the pipeline. So I'm going to thank you in advance for your support. And I think your participation will help us reach out to more girls and create a bigger impact. And speaking of bigger impact, GET will be expanding beyond Penang. It's going up north or to the west to Kedah next year. And there are plans that we want to take this nationwide in the next coming years. So this is exciting time for the GET program and the future of the girls in engineering and technology. You know, we have started to lay the foundation, but there is so much more to do. And I, as a patron, look forward to seeing this program grow and to see much wider and higher participation and support from the government, the, all the different corporations, the schools and the community. So lastly, to end, I would like to say congratulations again to our graduates today and congratulations to everyone for making this milestone possible. This is just the beginning of greater things to come. So thank you very much and back to you, Miss MC, or Miss, to Miss MC, Maria and Ensley. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Dato, not only for that speech, but also for supporting the GED program. I speak for all the girls when I say that we enjoyed the program very much. Now that we have properly warmed up for today's session, I'd like to ask everyone to turn on your camera so we can take a group picture. Let's switch on our cameras, please. Thank you so, so much, everyone. Thank you. Next, let's hear a welcoming speech from Mr. Selvan Chinpun, Senior Director of Global Manufacturing Operations, Supply Chain, and Managing Director of NI. The virtual stage is yours, Mr. Selvan. All right, good afternoon and uh, salam sejahtera to Neto Shida Ahmad, Vice President and General Manager, Hisai Technologies, Patron of Girls in Engineering and Technology. Peng Yi Wui, CEO, Penang Science Cluster. Suresh Kumar Prabala, VP, Design Engineering Group. GM Chipset Silicon uh, Group Malaysia. GM Malaysia Design Center, Intel. Solomon Lortu, Vice President, Penang Operations, Motorola Solutions. Casey Lau, CEO, Inari Emetron Berhad, Ms. Daisy Rani Velupillai, Director, Malaysia Country Controller, Micron Technology, Ms. Azian Wahab, Asia Pacific Corporate Impact Lead, and I, also the lead of Get Core team, esteemed members of the uh, industry, Get mentors and facilitators, and most importantly, Get participants and graduates of 2021 Get program. Thank you, Dato Shida, for the great speech. Indeed, it was very, very inspiring. Uh, talking about the uh, Girls in Engineering and uh, Technology program, you know, we came to live to address the uh, growing concerns on the steady decline of high school students' enrollment in the field of science and technology, particularly for female students. The participation of female students in engineering and technology courses in local universities has been below expectations, and it has become a nationwide concern, particularly uh, the government, private sectors, and educators that would like to see more diversity in the technical and engineering workforce. I'm thankful for the continuous support from Penang Science Cluster to partner with the industry to address the challenges that we have today. And all of us in the industry know that diversity promotes innovation. We need more women making decisions, especially on the products, um, and the technology we use. And GET Program 2021 has shown initial success in getting female students who are thinking of their future to consider engineering as their potential career choice. Since the beginning of the program, GET participants have displayed their creativity and innovation in the technical and soft skills training. To the schools and industries who are represented here today, Thank you for supporting our students and mentors in this pilot program. Although the data shows 39% of the girls choosing, choosing science or technology streams in their secondary school, majority of those students eventually pick a career in life sciences rather than engineering and technology. I believe that the GET program overcomes the misconception of engineering and provides valuable engineering opportunities and brings awareness to female students. We hope that um, you will continue to make every effort to support female students' interest in engineering by providing access to resources and opportunities. In the years to come, we hope that the students can continue to engineer ambitiously and we can eventually build a steady, sustainable pipeline of uh, female students pursuing engineering and technology careers. In closing, I would like to uh, especially mention the uh, core team of GET, uh, which consists of all female engineering leaders from NI, uh, particularly Azian Wahab, who's leading the uh, core team, Intel, Keysight, Micron, and Motorola. The other women to, who built this entire program from scratch, uh, GAT would not be what it is today without you all. So thank you very much. I also would like to uh, welcome the new companies that signed up to, get, to support GET 2022. Uh, welcome to Inari and Metron, uh, Vitrox, RoboBosch, PowerTools, Contron, and Pixart Imaging. Special appreciation and thanks to Intel, 
uh, key side, Micron technology and Motorola solutions for your support to start get program this year. Last but not least, thank you Penang Science Cluster for excellent work in educating our children in STEM and giving us the opportunity to make an impact in the community where we live and work. The seeds that we plant today will shape the landscape for years to come. And I know that our efforts here will contribute to a greater horizon for the upcoming generations. Congrats to all the GET participants and graduates of 2021 GET program. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you so much for those kind words, Mr. Selvam. Um, thank you so much for those kind words, Mr. Selvam. I hope me and the girls will make you proud as future leaders in the STEM industry. So sorry for the delay earlier. Next, let's have Ms. Li Wei Ting from Customer Solutions Consultant government, from Government Google Cloud for the sharing sessions. Hello, everybody. Uh, am I, is it okay for me to share my screen? Uh, well, I think you should be able to share your screen. You can go yeah. ahead. Yes. Okay, no problem. Uh, hi, Whiting. I think you're muted. I think that's a problem whenever I share the screen. That's the problem. Oh, I see. With Zoom. So it's okay. Let me do okay. it again. Yeah, no problem. All right. Thank you. Um, I will stop sharing the audio so that you can hear me. Yep. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Great. Hi, everybody. So, um, girls, uh, I want to congratulate you that you have decided to choose a career or at least do something uh, in tech and engineering. So I'd like to kind of introduce a little bit about myself. Um, you look at me and you say, oh, what does she look like? You know, does she look like somebody in tech? When people actually talk to me, right, they think that I am a teacher. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe I talk like a teacher. And I want to share a little bit about my journey as to where I came from and how I managed to stay in a career in tech for three decades. Yeah. So I've been here since before you guys were born. So I started in this line and I'm still in it. And I'd like to share with you how I managed to stay here when most of my friends actually left. That means they have decided to take a career elsewhere. Yeah? Okay, so fun facts about myself. So I'm a middle child. And I am from KL, so I only visit uh, Penang as a tourist, but I come from Kampong KL. Um, one interesting thing is that all the schools I ever went to have become shopping malls. So my primary school and secondary school is now Pavilion, if you have actually been to KL. Uh, my, um, when I went to my uh, STPM, my school is now my town, yeah? Now, um, you're wondering, okay, I, I, don't... I actually, sorry. 
Can you hear me? No. Oh, me oh, it's breaking up. Is it breaking up? We can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you okay. Oh, great. Okay, Hello. sorry. Yeah. So when I was in school, right, I wasn't really like the top student in mathematics or physics. And I never really thought of becoming a someone in tech. So because I found myself more creative than logical. So this is the stereotyping that people have, right? People who need to be good in technology and engineering must be good in maths and physics. So, you know, and, and I wasn't like the most logical person because I really go with the flow. So if you take a personality type uh, test like Myers Briggs, I ended up to be an ENFP, which is extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and perception. And my childhood ambition right, was correct because I wanted to be a journalist or a psychologist, and I never thought that I will be in IT or an engineer. So that was like um, that was how I grew up, right? I wasn't encouraged. You are a nerd, and you are very good in mathematics, and therefore your career should be in uh, something like STEM, yeah. But those days, right, the choices of um, jobs and all that was actually more in science. So somehow, right, along the line, our school or my school, right, really encourages um, to go to the science stream where we have more choices. Because if you were in the science stream, you could switch to something like arts or commerce later on. But if you did something in arts and commerce or something else, you could never go back to science. So in my world, right, or when I was actually in school, that was our choice. But my mind was that I said, I'm not great in mathematics, so I cannot have a career in IT. But guess what? I ended up in a career in IT. And I just want to share with you what really happened along the journey. Yeah. So, um, so I started, uh, so when I was actually applying for university, I applied to universities in Malaysia and I applied to a uh, university in Singapore because that was all I could afford or my parents could afford to send me. And uh, NUS, where I graduated, offered me a, um, a place in computer science. And I thought to myself, you know, that's the hot topic, right? Everybody wants a career in computer science. It was really exciting in those days. So I decided to take up the challenge, even though in my dreams, right? You know what I told myself? I said, oh, I'm going to do this class and I'm going to do some other career. So I just needed to get a career, a, a kind of like um, a, a degree and then get started. So I went and did my computer science degree. And I came out right in the mind that I didn't want to do tech because I thought that I wasn't good in tech. Now, that was how we were stereotyped because they said, well, in order for you to be good in tech, you have to be like this and that and this and that. So that was the perception how people always see um, people who are going to be successful in tech. Now, so I actually got a job when I graduated as a technical writer. Now, so the technical writer really bridges my skills where I could actually practice my creativity side of me, and yet I have technology knowledge, yeah? So I started in a career. So my boss came to me and said, you know, don't waste your time being a developer or software engineer, because you have um, the, the side of you, right, that can go very far if you, you do something else in the technology world, yeah? So I took this challenge and became a technical writer. Now, after a while, right, I thought to myself, I looked at my friends and said, well, they are not, they're getting very far. They're they are actually developers, they're software engineers, and I was just a technical writer. So I thought to myself, in five years time, right, what will happen to me? Um, I would not have any technical knowledge. So I went to my boss very briefly and told her, I want to go back to a technical career because I think that that's where the future will be. And so she was very angry with me, but I said, I just want to build my skills. And I thought that, you know, I want to challenge myself. So I actually opted for a transfer within the company to become um, a application developer. So I went to become an application developer. I was actually assigned to a project um, to do programming for a public sector uh, project for the traffic police in Singapore. So that is under the Ministry of Home Affairs. And I found out, right, all the traits that I have, which is being very creative, being very intuitive and able to empathize with the end user, right? All those things that I had in me, right, could actually be applied to a job as a techie. 
and I said, well, and then I had another um kind of like a, a character about me is that I like to troubleshoot. I like to do problem solving. And I love to debug people's programs. I was looking for problems to solve. And because I believe that when I solve problems, I can actually learn more. So if I'm put into trouble, I will learn more than if everything went well. Yeah. So I decided that I wanted to do more and I did another transfer. I became like a real nerd. So I was actually asked, I asked my, uh, my boss, right, to transfer me to a job where I was looking at the system, meaning that I was looking at the operating system. I was looking at upgrading of systems and all that. So I moved from application development into like really back end because I thought that it was fun, right? To kind of troubleshoot if a machine goes down, I want to be able to fix it. So, and I just kind of like to do that. And that skill, right, actually landed me in my second job, which is I got a job to come back to Malaysia. So I was actually spending time in Singapore and I found Singapore boring. So if any of you are thinking of going to Singapore to work, right, the money is good, but it's really like, you know, not a very good place to be when you want to be like, you know, enjoy life. So I decided to come back to Malaysia. I took up this job with uh, ESO Malaysia. At that time, it's called ESO. Now it's actually called ExxonMobil. So I got a job um, with that company and I was actually doing something different. So the boss actually said, you know, we are looking for someone who could do a couple of things. It's, uh, I need someone who actually can talk to end users. I need someone who is very technical and yet wasn't a person who could not relate to a user requirements. So they said, well, when we interviewed you, right, you actually had those traits with you and we want to offer you a job. So I took that job and I came back to Malaysia and I took up that challenge. And one of the interesting things was I, I did was that what motivated me was they gave me several awards. So I won an award for being very creative in solving a problem that makes me have to come back to work at 12 midnight every weekend to fix a problem. So maybe I'll just go back a little bit what it means. Now, every, every weekend on a Friday night, uh, Saturday morning at 12.30 a.m., I will get a phone call from my operators who were, up, who were actually managing the system. They will call me and say, Waiting, the job failed again. Can you come in and fix it? So I will have to drive down from my house, right? Troubleshoot it and try to fix it. And then I say, well, actually, I'm tired of doing that, right? How do I automate it so that I can not get a phone call at 12.30 every weekend? Right? I want to enjoy my weekend. So I actually came up with a solution that solved that problem, right? And they gave me an award for that. And I got that award, right? I think within like three months of joining. So that really motivated me and said, well, I think I landed up in the right job, right? To be a techie and I'm actually in, uh, you know, and I solve problem for myself. Not only do I solve a problem for myself to make my life easier, I could actually solve problems for other people. So I went on to do things like, you know, looking at trouble, <laughs> looking at trouble, uh, because I was actually supporting end users uh, in an oil company, right? So I need to find creative ways to solve problems for them. And then I said, well, this sounds like a great job. And I managed to, to solve these problems, right? And then I actually fixed a lot of problems. And that actually uh, kind of opened the door again to uh, my third job, which is the a vendor company called Candle Corporation, which no longer exists. They, they met me, right? And they said, you know, you, could, you actually know our product better than my engineers. So they said, why don't you come and join me? And I got like a hundred percent raise. Now this is like wow, great motivator, right? They gave me a hundred percent raise to join them. So if you come over to to us, we will pay you double your salary, right? And you're gonna get like a bonus and stuff like that. So what I did was that I just took the plunge and said, let's go for it. And guess what? When I joined this company, it is a very technical company because everybody else was very tech technical. And, and guess what? I was the only lady in the whole company. It was like I go to uh, attend training. I go to the workshops, right? And I am the only engineer in the whole group. Now, 
it is like uh to me right it's like why don't ladies want to do this job so that actually motivated me right to talk to girls who are thinking of a career in technology because they will have perception why is it girls don't last very long i'm going to share a little bit more about what i found but i was always alone so what meaning is that when i'm alone right i don't have a lady colleague to talk to and but that actually kind of uh, made me also very outstanding you know because i'm the only lady in the group of guys uh male engineers and everybody knows who i am oh that girl and then everything yeah we know that girl so that actually carried forward when i joined ibm which was uh, which actually acquired my company and again i was the only lady in the whole group so when i walk around right everybody knew who i was like oh she's the one so actually a lot of ladies right why do they stop being a um doing technical and i think you will actually come to that kind of decision um some of them said i don't want to work late nights you know because my family is is worried about me i have kids at home and blah 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 and they stop doing a technical role the second one is that they feel very lonely because they are the only female in the whole group there's no other lady for you to talk to you know it's really like no other lady so uh, practically, if you want to talk girl to girl, there's no one. So you learn to talk to everyone equally. Now, at that time, right, I didn't think about inclusion. Like when we talk, right, we can always talk about different things. It's not necessary anything to talk to another lady about. But I also found that, you know, there are some of the ladies in tech, they also take jobs in management because they said that they couldn't cope with technology. And I'll share a little bit more about that later. So they decided to become managers or they become uh, instructors. So they leave the really technical job to do things like that. And that's also a career choice. It's still in tech and you are teaching other people or mentoring other people, right, to have a career in tech. And, and these are two main reasons why ladies leave technology, yeah? They leave technology like being a real techie or an engineer in their career. And so what I did was that when I was in um, IBM, I get to change my job every two years. Now, I get tired of the job every two years, and they always give me a new challenge. They say, why think you you already doing this very well? Do you want to try something else? And they will offer me another thing and another thing, and I changed like um, probably four or five jobs within IBM itself. Uh, but every job, right, led me to develop my skills and meet more people and to develop the way I would talk to customers. So I think that um, the, the creative side of me, uh, the problem solving, loving side of me really helps me in my career, yeah? And then I decided and someone asked me, do you want to join this company called SAP? And I said, well, I know nothing about SAP except in my one of my earlier jobs, right? I supported the system, but I didn't know much about it. And so I joined SAP and I stayed there for eight years doing a very technical job. Again, I'd like to share with you, right? In SAP, there's two types of jobs. One type of job is what we call an application or business function related, which most of the people come from backgrounds like accounting or something else. And there was another group of jobs that came from technical background. And guess what? I repeat myself all the time. I'm the only lady in the whole group again right so uh when i went when i was there and i got to i got to go for a training in germany where our hq is i was actually among the architects enterprise architects um in the group there were like 40 of them 40 architects in the same room and guess how many ladies were there there were only three ladies i represented the whole asia pacific one of the ladies represented um, Europe, and another lady uh, represented the um, Middle East. So there was only three of us. We were like three ladies doing very technical work, but being an architect, right? Um, so it's a little bit higher level. We were still talking technology with our customers, but there was only three of us among the 40 people that actually attended that training. And I actually asked her, right, oh no, are you tired? Do you get tired of your job? And then, you know, just to chit chat and, and kind of get a, you know, to know them. And they said, no, because everything, right, 
um, the technology change all the time. You're always learning. So there's always new challenges for us to, to look at. There are new things for us to look at and so on and so forth. So I was there, like I mentioned before, like uh, eight years. So I started eight years in SAP. So I was in, um, I became like the enterprise architect. And then I got a call from Google, you know, Google Cloud. And who doesn't want to join Google? And it's like, wow, Google knocked on my door and want to hire me, right? So I took the challenge and I said, okay, I will join Google. And then I became a customer engineer in Google. So what does a customer engineer do? So a customer engineer will take Google technology and try to solve customers' problems. So it is like very exciting for me because it's like, wow, I'm in the brave new world of cloud. I'm getting to play with AI, ML, um, data analytics, and I'm actually benefiting a lot of customers. But one of the things that I found in Google was that, again, uh, in my group, I'm also the only lady among 20, uh, 20 plus people. There are other ladies in other teams, but in Google, we do a lot of um, inclusion. We try to recruit people uh, irregardless of their race, their religion, their sex, their age, what background, are they able, are they disabled? So one of the great things that I learned about companies like this, right, is that they give a chance to you if they feel that you can bring make a difference. So most of us will join this company with the idea that we want to make a difference for the, for the citizens of the world. That means we want to benefit or bring our technology to benefit everyone else. Yeah. So this is like, you know, quite interesting. And I said that throughout my career, right, I never regretted doing a career in tech and staying tech, right? I didn't, I didn't think about, I want to go into sales, I want to become a manager, or I want to be whatever, right? So it's kind of like, um, and I want to, and I've been actually talking to uh, girls, young, that means when they're in secondary school and all that. And I'm glad to say, right, because of me, I have two nieces. The two of them have decided that they want a career in tech. So they say, you know, actually it's quite fun. So one of them wants to be an engineer and the other one, I think she wants to be a hacker. I don't know why she wants to be a hacker. So the two of them, right, they, when they see me at work and they hear what I talk about to my customers, because I'm doing this virtually, um, they get inspired. They say, you know, I think my aunt has a very cool job and I want to be like her. So I actually really encourage you, right, to actually be the influencer to be around you, right? You will encourage the next generation of uh, engineers or tech people, uh, girls in tech, right? Like yourself, because you become their role model. When you are very happy in your job and you really find it very exciting, I think that you automatically become a role model yeah, to people. You don't even have to say much. I didn't really have to tell them, oh, a career in tech is really good for you. So I'm gonna go and share some of the traits, right? When you're thinking to yourself, now that you have graduated, do you want to kind of continue to pursue a job in tech? Yeah. So let me just tell you, a job in tech really brings you money. Now, most people, I say, okay, maybe I shouldn't think, I should think about what makes me happy. Actually, some of these things do matter, but really, I would like to encourage you to think about get a job that you're really happy in, but also brings you the potential of making money so that you can do the things that you want to do because when you have financial freedom then you can do whatever you want yeah and this is something that actually i found that i could do because i had a job that was very um stable i had a career that that everybody wants like you know you can find a job at any time and you can find a job at any age it's kind of like wow it's cool yeah so that is one of the things that, you know, in priority you want to do. Now, the second thing is that we want to fight against stereotype because people say that, you know, girls don't do well. Let me tell you, right, in your job, when you are starting out, you know, guys will look down on you. Unfortunately, right, guys actually look down on people like us. They say, you know, girls are no good in tech. 
they can only do maybe this thing and that thing they are not good and stuff like that let me tell you girls are good in tech never do believe in yourself right and fight against these guys who think that they are better than you because most guys that i see in tech right they are kind of one track mind i will tell you they are very nerdy they only do things that they think works now that doesn't work when you are in a tech world imagine that if you are an engineer and you are creating a product for people if you are a programmer and you're writing a application for people you are not creating a product for yourself right you are creating a product for someone else now one of the things that i found that we could do better than some people is that we have the ability to empathize with our users we have that mind um, you know that mind to do that and it doesn't matter whether you're a girl or a guy if you believe right that you are creating a solution a product for someone else then you are in the right job because that's what a career in engineering and it does you are making the world better for someone else not just for yourself yeah now number two is that creative thinking is actually very important because when i thought that i am better off in a creative job like a journalist or a writer but i was wrong because a career in tech and engineers really want you to practice the creative side of you right number one you want to be able to do problem solving in the most creative way that you can you cannot be one track mind like I cannot solve this problem and you keep going back and trying to solve it the same way i'm very glad that in your projects right you get to practice the creativity side of you so that's what is needed in a career in tech and that's what i practice yeah number two you want to be open-minded you want to hear what people say you want to get feedback because feedback is what makes you a successful person yeah whether in personal life or in your career if you receive feedback you're open-minded now, the other one is that you have to have that analytical mind, yeah? You want to be able to divide what is true, what is not true, like get to the bottom of it. What is the problem I'm trying to solve? Is it on the surface, it looks like this, but actually that's not the real problem. So you need creativity to kind of do that analytical mind, right? Number three, you need to be a little bit organized, yeah. I am not like the most organized person, I need to confess. I just need to practice. But organizing your thoughts, organizing and putting in the perspective that you need to share with people. Because when you're in IT and, and engineering, right, you never work alone. You have to work with lots and lots of people. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to communicate your ideas to them so that they understand, right? how the whole thing will work together because we want to leverage on everybody's strength now so that's where the communication is now if you can't communicate i'm very glad the mcs are really great you know and i want you to think about when you are in tech right you think that oh i need to be nerdy right i need to be sitting there um typing my programs and doing stuff on my own that's not true right when you have a when you are doing something in technology and engineering you need to be able, like I mentioned, communicate with your peers. When you become a manager, a team leader, you need to communicate with your team members. You need to be able to communicate with your customers. You need to be able to communicate with your boss. And finally, you want to be able to communicate to the public, right? Yeah, like I said, the customer or talking to people when you are in a webinar and so on. So I do a lot of stuff. but communication is very important because that's where people understand what you're thinking where you're going with this fact yeah communication skills is something that i i think that is a soft skill that's really important so let me just kind of end i think i talk quite a little bit a lot is that what are the hot careers in tech now i'm not an engineer so i can only talk about what is available in technology anything to do with data yeah whether you create beautiful infographics analysis of data whether you are a a person who designs what to do with data yeah we call it data architects data if you go into a career to deal with data that is one of the top jobs if you are really interested in machine learning artificial intelligence which i am very interested in 
yes, that's also a very hot career. But this career uh, needs a little bit more like, you know, you, you need to do a little bit more learning. But it's a really rewarding one because machine learning is going to be part of our uh, daily life. You want to use machine, machine learning, right, to help people, yeah, to be able to help maybe uh, the disabled to understand uh, communication, content, and so on and so forth. It's very exciting what we are doing with uh, machine learning AI. If you are very interested in creating solutions for customers, solution architecture is one of the areas that you want to go to. Now, if you are super nerdy, right, and you're very interested, I want to solve, like, you know, I want to um, uh, look at cybersecurity. How do I prevent hackers? How do I become a hacker, you know, like a white hacker? Because you can make money as a white hacker. So a white hacker is really like people who do hacking for a living and people pay you to hack the system, yeah? So cybersecurity, a very hot topic. If you're interested in doing that, it's really good. Developers, we need developers. Now, developers are the people who create cool applications. Whether it's an application you develop and sell on your own, whether you are a developer who's doing development for a big company, right? It's really like if you are very interested to put your ideas into reality, de developer is what you can go into. And developers, well, you can always make money, you know, like putting your uh, apps on uh, Play Store or Apple Store and all that. Now, the other one, of course, is cloud computing. Like if you want to get a career like, well, wow, I want to do everything and I want to be in the hottest area, right? Join cloud computing. So there are lots of cloud computing companies out there. Google is one of them. Um, you can also think about like AWS, Azure, Alibaba. There are so many cloud companies out there. There are some cloud companies that sell solutions. You can think about a career in cloud computing. Now, these are some of the hot careers that we have. Think about it. Like, how do you want to get into that? Now, uh, getting internship, looking at what are the careers opening, what are the new skills we need to build, right? To get a job uh, in some of these areas is really important. So I just want to kind of share with you is that I can last three decades in this career because I find that every day I learn something new. I learn something new about technology. I learn something new from being scolded by my customer. When I make a mistake, my customer teach me something else. I learn from my juniors, people like you guys who actually join me in, let's say, in my job. I learn something new from a new perspective from people that, you know, from people from all backgrounds and all ages. I learn about myself every day. Like, you know, what are the new things? What are the things I know? What are the things I really don't know? And sometimes I find things that I don't know more than I know. And I'm not afraid of learning new things. And that's why I love being in this job. And I really want you guys to think about, you know, go against stereotyping. Be a role model for juniors. You know, people look at you and say, you know, why does my sister, why does my cousin, why does my auntie, why does my mother, when you become mothers too, why does my mother have a job in this and I want to be just like her, you know, and they get inspired by that. So I hope that that kind of uh, gives you an idea, right, why someone like me, and I think I'm pretty rare, most of them uh, are really in management, most women in tech that you see in the news are really management level, but I chose not to become, or I chose not to be a manager. I chose to remain in tech because I love what tech can do for people and how it can improve people's lives. So I hope that kind of inspires you to have a career in tech. And um, any questions for me? before I hand back to our great MCs. Any questions? Anyone? Any of you? Even the MCs can ask me questions. If, oh, is it too late to change your career? It's never too late to change your career. I have people, right, that changed to an IT career after they gave up on their first career. Okay? So people, many companies hire on inclusivity, so we don't like, for example, Google doesn't hire you based on your age. That's why I can get into Google, right? So many companies will not hire me at my age, just to be frank. But companies like Google, they said, 
we don't care how old you are. We care the person that you are. So, you know, I hope that helps. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I have a question for you. How do yeah. you manage work-life balance? Oh, okay. It's hard. <laughs> uh, especially during this time when we are doing... Um, I will tell you that um, work-life can be very difficult for a woman in tech, especially. Because you have, to you have to balance work and family. Expectations of if you have a family, like if you have kids, you have mother-in-law, okay. I will tell you, mothers-in-law are the worst one. If you can manage your husband and your mother-in-law, you are safe, yeah? Uh, some of my colleagues actually bring their kids to work. So do find a, um, in order for you to be balanced, think about what really matters. If you only think about your career and you want to go far, you may have to give up on your family, yeah? If you want to have family, you may want to look for a job in tech that doesn't take up so much of your time and that could be something that is not that high level doesn't you know like uh, and you can work when the kids are sleeping yeah so um you have to balance and i think that is not easy i decided that my career was more important than family but now i realize that i could have put my family first do not forget your family when you're doing this let me give you a clue girls if you want to have a great career in tech and you want to have long hours in tech, find a husband <laughs> that is willing to stay at home for you. Because that's what happened to some of my bosses who are very successful. Their husbands support them totally. They became the caregiver. That means they look after the children. They did the cooking. They did half of the housework. So if you want to have a great career, um, long hours in tech, think about the husband that you want to marry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to be, but this is how some of my colleagues have been very successful. A great husband who understands your job. Yeah. Any question? What are the questions? Hey, um, this is SF from Intel. Hey, I think yep. very great yep. inspirational sharing. Um, loving it. So, being a single female among all the men, how, yeah. how do you feel all this year and how did you continue to get it going? I think this one, uh, I, I really need to hear this from you. Thank you. Okay. Now, I think that sometimes we stereotype the way we communicate with people. You know, um, I found that communicating with men in the same job as you you, you talk about things that matters to everyone, you know, because they don't want to talk about what is the latest, maybe they enjoy food or whatever. So I found out that in order to communicate with them, I found things in common with them. Yeah. Um, if they were interested in, oh, surprise, K-drama, you'll be surprised how many guys like K-drama, okay? Or K-pop, well, food. So what happens was that I started talking to them, not like I'm one of the guys, right? But finding things in common with them, things that I'm comfortable to talk about and things that they are comfortable with talk about. After a while, right, they forget that they are guys and I'm a girl. They forget because they talk to me as a colleague, as a fellow tech person, and they never remember that I am a girl. Um, the second one is that I found it difficult to talk to women now. You know, I try to mix with women, but the conversation that women, women talk about when they're not in tech, I mean, I, it's just in general, right? The things that they talk about, I, I no longer am interested in because they were very focused on the family. I think you brought up very interestingly, when you are single and female, right? You can be like one of the guys. Now, you don't have to be like one of the guys. You don't have to like necessarily take up a hobby like them, but always find things in common with them. After a while, they forget you are a girl. You know, um, just let me quickly share with you, like I went on a project where uh, in China where there were so many men in that company because it was manufacturing. There are no, no toilets for ladies. 
So they actually had to convert a men's toilet to a lady's toilet. And there was only one other lady from the customer side that was with me. And she said, I'm so sorry. Here, 99% of the people are men. You have to work with this. But the guys, right, uh, I mean, but they don't look down on you and say, oh, there's a lady who doesn't know what she's doing. So after a while, they don't see you as a lady anymore. They just see you as a fellow, like a uh, engineer who came to work with them. Um, so that's how I got by. And I think I practiced that. And I think guys are very comfortable to talk to me because they know that I, I understand them better, you know, than another colleague. Yeah. So it's just that you just remember that you don't have to be a manly person. You don't have to be an overly girly person. Just be yourself. Find the things in common with them so that, you know, you can communicate well. Agree. Thanks so much, watching for your uh, insight. I think sometimes we do spotlight too much on the gender part. In, in fact, yeah. we should be focusing on more on the content and the context of it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, I had a question. Mm -hmm. If you have multiple passions, how do you choose what to study? Oh, like me. Okay. Multiple passions, right? Um... So you have to think about, actually what you study sometimes doesn't make, um, I would say, doesn't give you your career. That means you don't choose your career based on what you study. I will tell you a lot of people study something and become something else. Yeah. Now, I myself had multiple passions. So I thought in a very practical way, I choose to study something that I can be good at without much effort. Like if I have to struggle through my exams and my classes or whatever and i'll be very miserable right just because i want a career in that so i chose to study something that i love i may not be good at it but i think that if i love it i can do well so choose if you have multiple passions look at the number one right i chose where i want to study like i want to study in singapore because i want to study in english for some reason i said i think if i study in english I will do better than if I studied Malay. So I was Malay educated all my life. I wanted to be exposed, right, to a world where I could com communicate in English, right? So I said, well, I want to do that. I want to meet other people. So I will study, I will choose to study something that I know that I can do well. I may need to put a little more effort, but of course what I study will lead me to a career or a choice of careers, right? that I want to do in the future as well. But it's not necessary that you will actually have a career in the, the subject that you study. Just remember to choose to study something that you love, you can be passionate about. Because the worst thing is that you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I don't want to go to this class. I don't want to do this. I want to change my major. Don't do that. Just think about what you can do well. Do well in it, and the career will open up for you. Really, yeah, just do that. I hope that helps. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I have a question. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, what do you do when uh, during the free time? <gasps> oh, okay. I do nothing with IT. I was gonna share that. Um, I picked up. Uh. DIY stuff. So I make like a uh, homemade skincare. I make soap. I make shampoos. I bake. So I make bread. I do everything that is not IT. <laughs> so why? Because I want to practice the other side of my brain, right? Because I'm always doing facts. I want to do something that it's totally different so I can relax, yeah? And of course, the other passion is I watch a lot of K-drama, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> so I can recognize the, the K-pop singers because my colleague was showing a picture of this Korean singer uh, that was performing in our year-end event, and I recognized her. I say, oh, that's Ailey. And he said, I knew you knew that. <laughs> okay. I use Google to help me search for her picture just to, to kind of verify that it's her. But I say, I think it's her, but I, you know, so, but anyway, so do everything that is different from your work. 
don't do the same things that you do at work when you're free because that really like you know have another life you know be somebody else when you are free yeah okay any more questions i i i have a question again <laughs> yeah yeah no problem no problem uh yeah. is it like doing it job uh need to spend many time on it like no rest or got rest yes. about how many okay. hours okay. to rest okay it depends on what job you which which job you take yeah there are some jobs you really do nine to five you can do nine to five you know no problem there are jobs, some jobs you do five to nine <laughs> meaning that you do the night shift okay and some people like it because they can think very well there are some jobs that allow you to do work whenever you want which is like a developer you can if you want to be a developer right you can work you wake up oh i will i i wake up i have a colleague who wakes up at 2 a.m in the morning he works until like uh five and or something like that and he goes to sleep okay their careers like that their careers that never ends like you know like doing uh work from home people will ping you at any time because there's zoom that's google meet people think that they can call you at any time so there are different jobs that that is different so um if you want to do things like i will tell you that if you have a job in it and after a while you get tired of being like doing long hours be a instructor the instructor right you get a regular job because you're teaching people in it you are a lecturer in it but you do normal hours and yet you are still kind of you know in it right because you're sharing so you could do stuff like that you can do customer support which is like you solve problem for customers but you have a shift meaning that you you strictly work like eight hours a day or 10 hours a day that's it you don't work all the time so there are different careers in it that allows you to work uh different times of the day so it's not always um 24 hours yeah i gave up on the late nights you know when i was doing project it was always late night so i decided that i wanted a job that i could work whenever i want so i went into like what we call vendor line so when i'm in a vendor line like and now in google cloud right sometimes i don't work right i can take time off to do some last minute shopping or do some cooking right and just make up for it it still works yeah yeah okay mm. i hope that answers your question <laughs> Yes, yes, I think that doesn't mean long hours. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, we don't really have time for more questions. Yeah. I'm sorry, okay. but you have answered so many great questions and you yeah. have learned. Yeah. <laughs> we learned a lot, like so yeah. much. Thank you, Ms. Y. Thing. We are yeah. honored to have you here with us today. I love that you highlighted that you are more of the creative and feeling type and still thrived in the tech industry. And it gives me confidence that my friends and I can also thrive in any career we choose, even if it means breaking stereotypes. So throughout the GAP program, we really got to know our volunteers from the industry a little bit better. Thank you so much for spending so much time with us from facilitating our monthly sessions all the way to the project phase to, of GAPT. To appreciate our facilitators and mentors for their contribution to the program, let's watch this video featuring GAPT volunteers. Enjoy! Hi, I am a facilitator and mentor. Hi, I'm facilitator. I am the facilitator and mentor. A facilitator. Facilitator. Another one is as a mentor. I'm a facilitator and mentor. Mentor. I'm a facilitator and mentor. One of the few facilitators and mentors. A facilitator. A facilitator and mentor for girls in engineering and technology. I wanted to show a good example through my actions and my sharing to the next generation of girls in engineering and technology. Zero, as this is my first time. I expected to only mentor two students to complete their project on time. 
One thing I learned during GAC was there was so much passion shown for the program. Dedicated girls, committed mentors, and amazing committee. It is really fun to learn together with these girls as they are kind, humble, helpful. One thing I learned from GET was how to convey my message to an audience that isn't necessarily familiar with the subject matter. When girls share their challenges and listen and appreciate our advice and encouragement. Guide the girls to design their own websites and at the end the feedback from the girls is saying that oh, uh, Miss Yanni is the best facilitator and that is my biggest achievement and my most happy moment. Continue to be who they are, continue to believe in themselves and continue to bring out the hero in them. Engineering is not as hard as you think. We need more girls in this field. So please do not hesitate to step in. Be proud as a woman. Be stronger as a woman. Girls, you are the future of this country. I believe in you. Certainly, yes. It is great to help more girls venture into technology. At the same time, you also get to learn something from the others as well. I recommend all the women engineers volunteer yourself to get. You will find the little knowledge that you share inspire the girls. Yes, it's rewarding to be part of a program that empowers young girls to pursue engineering and technology. This is an excellent program. On behalf of all the go-getters, a huge thank you to our mentors and facilitators from NI, Intel, Keysight Technologies, yeah. Motorola Solutions, Micron and LAM Research. We surely had tons of fun with GET throughout this year. Now, we would like to invite Keshika, a fellow go-getter, to represent all of us graduates and share her experiences during GET. Keshi, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you, Ainsley. Hello, everyone. I'm Kashika. Some of us might have met through breakout room activities, and even though we have never met in person, we all have one thing in common. We are all here today to be a GAP graduate. It would be insane to say that GAP wasn't a fun program because it is insanely fun. Throughout this whole year, most of the time, we are stuck in our home, and some of us are bored to death, right? I don't know about you, but GAP had given me something to do. Something fun that made me go, what is bored? Every session we had together is a session filled with laughter and enthusiasm. There was never a boring session. Get had given me lots of experience from building websites to learning how to talk to a crowd too. Even though the crowd is a virtual crowd. I remember one session when we had to build a 3D model using Tinkercad. I was struggling so hard because I didn't know that I had to put the plane on the block before inserting another block above it. But luckily, my facilitator, Miss Clarice Gerard, was there. She was so helpful. She didn't mind repeating the steps over and over again for me until I finally got the hang of it. Apart from that experience, I also encountered several problems when we were assembling our Raspberry Pi people to build our own traffic light model. I was so confused about which holes to put my wires in, and thankfully, my facilitator, Miss Kamarina, she didn't mind disassembling and reassembling her model a few times to help me out. In the end, my traffic light worked perfectly thanks to her. And how could I forget the most memorable moment during the GET project phase, which was my groupmates Adrian, Mari, and I had to create our final project in order to graduate from GET. We were rushing to finish our app that functions as a daily schedule before the deadline, which was going to be very soon, and our mentors, Ms. BK and Ms. Pei, they were a bunch of help. They helped us go through our codes and troubleshoot our mistakes. Whenever we are at a date end, our mentors would come in right on time to save us. I never would have thought that I would be able to create an app and that, that can function pretty cool, but here I am today thanks to my mentors. 
Thank you so much, Miss Vicky and Miss Faye, for that. Even though we didn't win Coolest Project Malaysia, we did win first place for getting the best mentors. And not just my group, but every other group had also won first place for having the coolest mentors. All the mentors did a great job, and thank you for sacrificing your time to hang out with a bunch of 16-year-old, overly enthusiastic girls throughout this whole year. And of course, thank you Penang Science Cluster team, Miss Amy and Miss Eileen. You guys are so much fun. Um, never forget how Miss Amy would play her elevator music while waiting for the girls to enter the Zoom meeting. And Miss Eileen's also famous line, girls, please log into your class craft if you haven't yet. I would miss this tiny thing so much. And lastly, thank you to GIGAT sponsors like NI, Intel, Motorola Solutions, Keysight Technologies, Micron, and LAM Research. Not only for making GET happen, but also for connecting Earth girls to so many role models that we can look up to. I also know of some of my friends who receive internet allowances and borrowed laptops from Penang Science Cluster. These were helpful not only for them to participate in GET, but also for learning, home, learning from home in general. Thank you for that. Also, bonus thank you to all my friends, the GET girls who are graduating with me today. The program wouldn't be the same without you girls, and the teachers who are in charge of this program too, especially my teacher, Miss Ho, who encouraged us to join this program. Thank you for that. Even though this program was done virtually, it was already a bunch of fun, and I can't imagine how fun it will be if we were done physically and we could meet and talk to each other in person. I look forward to a GET alumni reunion and to meet you girls in person in the future. Kudos again to all of you for graduating today. And with that, I end my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keshi. I cannot agree more with what you just shared. Shout out to my friend. You know, I think you're amazing. And it was absolutely great to be in the same team as you throughout the program. Thank you for making GET even more fun than it already was. What better way to showcase our collective experiences after Keshika's sharing earlier? We have seen the video featuring GAD volunteers. Now it's time to watch the video featuring our GAD girls. Let's play the clip. Let's play the clip. I expected to explore more about the STEM field and acquire more skills. I expected to learn STEM knowledge related to coding and it came true. I expected it to be a fun program and as well as I expected, it was a fun and amazing program. It would be science, especially engineering and technology holds an important key to the future. The one thing I learned in GET is AI. Artificial Intelligence I learned that women are not limited in any field I like how almost every session we had together The first thing we always do is We always discuss about women who had been on the part that particular field Before really getting into the program of the day One thing that I learned during GET is definitely about teamwork Especially when we're making our project A lot of teamwork and leadership skills needed One of my favourite memories is talking and discussing with our mentor and at the end of the activity, we will take a group photos as memory. My favourite memory during GET was the launch because I got to meet many prominent people who are working in the STEM field. My favourite part is when we have to learn hardwares and since it was my first time dealing with them, I was really happy when my mini traffic light works. It's like a miracle. I hope to further explore the STEM field and use knowledge and skills learned in GED in future projects. GET opened my eyes to how the engineering and technology industry look like. So who knows, I might change my career to something related to that industry. I want to create my own project and pursue with my future. I hope I can be a successful engineer in the future. 
I would definitely recommend Get to Girls. Why? Get is such a beneficial program, so whoever participate or join this program would definitely benefit a lot. A big yes. It's because it will definitely help them to gain more knowledge and learn interesting things. Of course, I would. I had lots of fun gaining new experience and also interesting knowledge from this amazing program. Thank you, GET. Thank you, GET. Thank you, GET. Thank you, GET. Thank you, Girls in Engineering and Technology. Thank you, GET. Thank you, Girls in Engineering and Technology. Okay, for your information, the video that we have just watched was edited by one of our very own go-getter and fellow graduate, Fi Yishan. Amazing work, Yishan. Do send me that video. Now, the moment we have all been waiting for is finally here, the website launch. So we would like to invite Mr. Ui, Mr. Ui Peng Yi, the CEO of Penang Science Cluster, to officially launch the website. Thank you. All right, uh, before I start and uh, give my speech and launch the website, let me just take a moment to acknowledge the presence of uh, the captains of industry, like uh, Kato Shida from Keysight, the patron of GET, Suresh Prabala from Intel, uh, Solomon Lotu from Motorola, Angela Cheong from HR, uh, Keysight, uh, Casey Lau from Inari, Amatron, uh, Selvam Chinnapan from NI, Daisy Rani from Micron, and Azian Rahab from NI. Uh, also joining us today, we have uh, leaders and uh, volunteer mentors from the founding companies of uh, GET 2021, which are NI, Intel, Keysight Technologies, Motorola Solutions, Micron, and LAM Research. And we, of course, have uh, representatives of companies that have committed to the girls in engineering and technology for 2022, which are Inari Enatron, Pixar Imaging, Robert Bosch Power Tools, Contron, and Vitrox. And we have uh, potentially all right, uh, companies uh, like Dell and Boston Scientific who will be joining us next year. Of course, we are joined by teachers and leaders of schools participating in uh, GET 2021, which, is, which are uh, St. George's, Methodist, uh, Penang Chinese Girl High School, Convent Pulau Tikus, Convent Butterworth, and Convent Datu Kramat. So let me first offer my congratulations to the inaugural graduating class of GET 2021. All of you girls have persevered and have now finally graduated. The website that I am launching today captures the journey that you all went through. It showcases snippets of the girls' work throughout the program, as well as the projects that they produced in order to graduate from the GET program. Our volunteers are also featured in this website. Many of them share their experiences in both teaching and learning from the participants. Through this website, we celebrate the achievements of all our participants and acknowledge the dedication of the all-female volunteer team in guiding the participants over the course of the program. I would like to thank the companies supporting the Girls in Engineering and Technology program in 2021, NI, Intel, Keysight, Motorola Solutions, Micron, and LAM Research, especially the volunteer facilitators and mentors from these companies. As we expand GET, to reach out to more girls in the northern region. Uh, I would like to also to thank companies that have already committed to supporting us in this program for 2022. Inari Amatron, Pixar Imaging, Robert Bosch Power Tools, Contron, Vitrox Technologies, and Xperia. I hope you all enjoy reflecting on your milestones as you explore GET website. Thank you again for being part of the Girls in Engineering and Technology program. Have a good evening, everyone. Back to you, MC.
thank you, Mr. Peng Yi, for launching the website. I can't wait to check out the website and look back all the experiences we shared over the past years. I hope you enjoyed today's ceremony as much as we enjoyed hosting it. But we have now come to the end of GET program and the end of today's graduation ceremony. With that, Maria and I have completed our roles as MCs for today, and we will pass the stage back to Miss Ailey. Well done, dear girls. So, so, yeah, I hope you guys uh, know how much work they put into this, especially the past three weeks or four weeks. That's when the exams are, and that's when schools are closing as well. So, I'm super proud of you girls. So, shout out to the get graduation core team again you know our mcs Ainsley and maria our game masters who actually already warm up the crowd before we actually started the session we started half an hour earlier uh kishi nurin and veranasha get girl representative who gave the sharing session earlier kishi and of course the person who edited that very nice uh video just now we have Yishen, and also all the girls that were featured in the video um once again thank you to the supporters of get 2021 and I, Intel, Keysight Technologies, Motorola Solutions, Micron, and Lam Research. And thank you to the companies who have committed to supporting Get in 2022. Thank you also, again, one more time to our all female volunteer team for the time and effort dedicated to the year long Get program. And last but not least, thank you very much to our teachers and school leaders for bringing Get program to your schools and the girls as well. See you in Get 2022. Have fun and an amazing evening, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone.